camera to your right and my camera. Right. Oh, oh, over here. Oh. To your right. Oh, to your right. Howard Mandel, yeah. congratulations. Um, when you saw the draft order kind of work its way out, you saw LA at number two, how much did that feel like a fit for you, not just basketball wise, but also with just all the things you bring uh, you know, off the court as well? Um, I love that I'm, I get to stay on the West Coast, and I love that they took a chance on me, and I feel like I'm just going to show that I can I can work really hard and help them a lot. Um, but, you know, I'll also be close to family, which is really important for me. Hey, Karen. Uh, this is Megan Mull with USA Days for the win. So my question to you is, obviously, it's very, very early in your WBA career. But when it's all said and done, what sort of legacy do you hope to leave on the court? That's a good question. Um, I would say I just want to continue the legacy of growing the sport. And I feel like I've said this a lot today, but we really have to look back at the women before us. And I know people keep saying that this is a historic draft class, but there were many, many talented draft classes before us. So um, I just want to give my props to the Don Staley, Cheryl Swoops, Lisa Leslie's, because you know they're why I'm here because I watched them growing up, and so I just hope that I can continue that legacy for the girls. Uh, Cameron, uh, to your right in the second one. Hey, Cameron, you're right here. Uh, Jackie Powell with the next. Uh, building off of that, you obviously mentioned the people you watched. What do you remember about the WNBA growing up? And how do you think its perception in the popular culture has changed? So growing up, I, I said this earlier before as well, but growing up, I was kind of first introduced to the league because my mom was a product line manager at Nike and worked on Don Staley's signature shoe and worked with Tamika Catchings and Jen Rosati, who I've played through in the basketball court. So I think I grew up just having so much admiration for these women and it was just really upsetting to not see that reciprocated by the public, what you see on social media, and I always do think the negative stands that stand up more than the positive, unfortunately, but um, it was really upsetting for me, and there were a lot of times where I, I was just kind of dumbfounded by the negativity, but I think, you know, now there's a positive switch, and hopefully we just can keep that momentum going. Hey, Cameron Lloyd, Carol from the Queen's Chronicle. Uh, first of all, what did you study at Stanford, and also, you went to high school in Beaverton, Oregon, which is the home of a certain well-known sports apparel company, yeah. but yet you signed with New Balance. I was curious how that happened. Yeah, so I studied communications at Stanford, um, and yeah, my parents both worked for Nike for 20 plus years, grew up in Beaverton, that's where the world headquarters are, yeah, so I'm definitely a Nike kid, born and raised. Um, I know, but New Balance came to me with, I see you wearing New Balances, by the way. <laughs> um, but. I, I'm just so thankful for them because they have signed me as their first female basketball player and they are just a phenomenal brand through and through what they stand for, how they support their athletes. So I, I truly could not be more excited and I, I converted. <laughs> Cameron in the center section, the last row to your right. Hi Cam, Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. I have two questions. One, you were pretty emotional up there and I'm wondering, uh, are your emotions, were, were you worried about where you might go? or is it being part of this this huge moment for women's basketball? And also, who's hit you up on your phone yet since you've been drafted? Has a certain godbrother? Oh, yes. Um, to answer your first question, um, I just think in these situations, it, it's a business town. You, you never know. And I had great conversations with the Sparks and Reagan Peebley and Kurt, and they're amazing, but you just never know, and I didn't want to assume anything. So. Um, it's just such a, a high-stress environment as well, so when they called my name, it's just a huge wave of emotions hit me, and when I saw my mom tearing up with my dad, that definitely really hit home, so just was super thankful. And can you remind me of the second question? Who's uh, Oh, congratulations. actually, so I actually FaceTimed Steph like five minutes before the, the show started, so he just said to, to just have fun with it. I think he can just share so much great advice, because obviously he's been through this, and you know, he just said, um, to make stuff like this fun because it can be stressful to make it fun. So he answered my mom's FaceTime call. I called Seth Curry as well. He hung up immediately because that's Seth. Uh, but then he called back right after. But yeah, they're just both great sounding boards for me. Guys, we have time for just one or two more because Camilla is ready to join us. Uh, uh, Cameron, third row, center section, to your left. Hi, uh, Cameron Lockman, Ross from NBA Australia. 
Um, you've played a ton of international basketball over the years. Do you have any memorable matchups against Australians? I do, and I played played with some great Australians as well. Agnes Emmanuel, who is a great friend of mine now, she's at TCU. But I specifically remember playing against um, Australia. I think U16 or U17 it was. And honestly, they're some of the strongest people I've ever played against. When they hit you with the screen, it takes you a while to recover. Um, and Warren Jackson is one of my favorite players ever. So I just really admire him. Cameron, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Do you want me to stay with us? We're going to be joined immediately by Camilla Cardinals and Curtis. Guys, if you have questions for Camilla, please let me know right away.